First it was Council, now it's a couple of players. The Cubs are starting to speak out. Let's go. You are Locked On Cubs, your daily Chicago Cubs podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You are Locked On Cubs, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Alongside Sam Olber, I'm Matt Cozy. Sam and I are lifelong fans, taking our passion into a discussion with you on all things Cubs. Thank you for being part of the show and making us your first listen today. And the best way you can help us grow the show is to listen every day. Like the video and comment anything below. Today's episode is presented by our great partner at Booking.com. Booking. Yeah, yeah. might stay could make you a fan of any city, even your baseball rivals. Book today on Booking.com, the official accommodation partner of Major League Baseball, and get the Booking.com app today. If Craig Council surprised you with his comments on Thursday, just wait until you hear Jamison Tayo and Dansby Swanson. As the Cubs begin to speak out with the end of the regular season drawing closer, the Cubs entered the season with goals of a playoff spot, but were eliminated on Saturday with over a week remaining on the schedule. Cubs are 80 and 76 with six games to go now. We'll cover the national series and preview the Phillies one later in the show. But Sam, I'm curious to get your thoughts for the first time on council's comments and then we can dive into what the players said and what it all means. I leave for a few days and I miss maybe the most significant audio of the entire campaign. Uh, as I landed from my trip on Sunday, Sunday evening, you know, and I started to look down out the window, a gloomy clouds, light rain, uh, uh, bears, not good. Cubs eliminated fall in the air. I started to get a little Sunday scaries. I started to get a little gloomy and depressed, but then I recalled the comments from Council on Thursday, Tyone on Friday, and more that we're going to discuss. And I got to tell you, Matt, it means something to me. Mm -hmm. It means something to me. First of all, I'd like to publicly uh, applaud you for your solo show on Thursday for Friday. It was well thought out. It was creative. It was outside the box. It was well executed. Um, On that note, you know, hearing counsel come out and say those things, you guys know this. I've been beating this drum for a long time. Why aren't we close? We're let's first acknowledge we're not close to the Brewers, and then and then he goes as far as and says it's not a personnel thing as much as a process thing. We've talked about that. We've hammered that home. There's something missing here. And then I thought the most important point was what Tyone said, and that's when he said, you know, they win the big moments. Whenever we play them, when we watch, whatever it is, they win the big moments. And Jed Hoyer, who who, who has a lot of strengths as a, as a player personnel guy, has not figured that out yet. The leverage, the moments, the things that you can't put in war. How about this? Michael Bush and Willie Adamas basically have the same wins above replacement. W- Willie Adamas is 32 ho- home runs and 8 million RBIs. How, how, and, and he plays shortstop. There's clutch. There's value there. And uh, even when the Cubs were really good, right, 15, 16, 17, 18, and then, of course, the end, the end of that era, it was the same thing. You know, certain things were good, but they couldn't get it done in certain leverage spots. The Brewers can. And for Council to come out publicly and say the things, check the boxes that we've been trying to say. We need to build a 90-win team here. That's what it takes to safely get in the dance. We're not trying to build an 85, 86-win team and hope to get lucky. That, that, that That's – that's a loser mentality. Obviously, he didn't say any of those things. That's me analyzing. Um, but I thought it was really refreshing. And look, I understand that that doesn't fix the season. I understand that it doesn't fix the problem. But to me, it's a big step in the right direction to know that this team that we cover every day, and I got to tell you, I only missed one show. I felt like I was gone for six months. It's great to see your face on camera. Yes, this team that we cover every day, it's nice to know that they're aware of what the problems are and they know where they need to get to because that's the first step. And we know personnel-wise, this team's not that far away. Couple tweaks here, couple philosophy changes here. I like that there's a little disagreement. Disagreement breeds good. It's good if you have the same goal. I like it. And, and I thought it was a positive weekend for the Cubs. All right. So a few things here because I think we're just getting cooking on the council stuff, man. Like, 
Well, yeah, no, there's a lot. I just there, thought it was refreshing. There's a lot. It is refreshing. Number like, one, like a mint. Hoyer in February, and even at, at, at Council's press conference in November, Hoyer kept pointing out, oh, I want him to challenge me. He, he's pushed back on things. Now all of a sudden, what? That's that's a problem for him. I, I want to know that. I know we probably won't. Then I do want to pay attention to what Council says this week, too. There's only six games left. He said that on Thursday. What else could he say this week? What could he say on Sunday next weekend when it's all said and done? And then, of course, we're going to be locked in on Hoyer. I believe that's going to be a week from Monday or Tuesday yep. with the end of season press conference. Um, but but what Council said was was huge. Uh, I do wonder if he'll reveal more about that in terms of what he sort of inferred. And I think what we both are now theorizing about him, especially coming over from a rival team, being in listener slash observation mode this year. Yeah, and, and let me cut you off for a second. You've been on that for a while off camera. You've said you we might not get a full council. He might just be doing some observing. We don't know if that's true or not, but it sure felt like it with those comments. Go ahead. Well, and I connect with that a lot. You know, I, I left a, a great school after the 2023 school year. I go to a new place. And, you know, I feel good. I feel confident. But I decide, you know what, I'm just going to listen this year. I'm just going to observe. I'm going to get used to it. Yeah. And now this year I'm getting more involved where I'm at. I'm I'm doing things after school. I'm, I'm, I'm speaking up a little more. I feel more comfortable. And, and maybe it's along those same lines for, for him, obviously, on a much grander scale. Here's a quote from Swanson, Sam. Oh. Quote, we clearly for two years haven't done well enough. I'm sure there's probably a lot of different avenues that need to be pursued or looked at just to figure out what's going to be our mixture to set out to not just try and get in, but what can we do to freaking dominate? There's no reason why we shouldn't be able to accomplish that here, close quote. Wow, I didn't hear that one yet. Then... Both of these brothers, Tyone and Swanson, go in depth on the Brewers, Sam. Wow. Did you know Swanson's brother-in-law is Jace Peterson, who played for the Brewers for three years? I did know that. Here's what Swanson said he heard from Jace Peterson and why he believes the Brewers excel at finding players who, quote, fit their style of play. Quote, they're clearly really good at identifying traits on the field and off, personality, game style that works for them. They're really good at having a set identity. They've always done a really good job of finding players that fit what they want them to fit, close quote. Mm. I, I just think that's so huge. Like, the players aren't stupid. No, this is beautiful. It, it, it takes two clicks of, a, of their phone to see how far behind the team that you put a uniform on are, are chasing every day. No, this is great. This is great. And this these are things that we over here and on they're this tired. They're starting to get tired of it. You know what? That's a good thing. No, we over here on this network have been saying this since July of 22. We have. No, but we – and that's true. And, 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 and talk about that more. Yeah, it's just it, – it's always felt – and and I'll be the first one to come out and say that I thought that the manager was going to change it, and it didn't. But maybe it will, just not in the way we thought. Maybe it'll be an indirect change. Maybe it's not actually having him be on the on the uh, you know the bench there making decisions. But as much as it is, you know, with with front office stuff and philosophy, and maybe it takes time because for a long time now, since 2018, and we've been saying this since we took over the show. We're just behind this team. We're behind them in everything they do. Uh, developing relievers, developing position players, winning on the margins, winning in the clutch. We're, we're behind. We're having another year where our Pythag record is, is less than what it's supposed to be. They're going to have another year where it's above. It's every single year. And I think Jed brought in counsel in a way indirectly was admitting defeat on this. Look, I can't figure this out, but you had success with them. So either maybe you'll you'll figure this out because you were the difference or you'll at least help me get there because you know what they're doing. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So I mm -hmm. suspect that he'll be open to this. 
I think it's it's necessary. I wish that this was something that was thought of and talked about more around early March. But, you know, it, it is what it is. It's done. You move forward, and we must pass this team. We must start beating this team. We must win this division. And the, the, the personnel at the by mid-March should be good enough to build a 90-win team. So, so you know, in, in Swanson's quote, we could dominate. And um, it, it's nice to hear the players think about this. It's nice. It, it, I, and I know people are going to roll their eyes. Like, oh, come on, don't fall for this. I'm not falling for anything. They could have easily just said, hey, we messed up for two months. That really hurt our season. We're going to come back next year stronger. They could have said that. That wouldn't have shocked people. They've come out directly and basically said, it was, forget the two months. We aren't as good as that team. They do things better than us, and we're starting to get ticked off about it, and we need to figure out a solution right now. And I think that matters. I think Tyone and Swanson are two good guys to say so. Yeah, they um, are. You know, I heard Horner before Friday's game. It was a little different. He said something like, it's just nice to have like a core group of guys. That felt more like a like a, a pitch for himself to stay on the team. Yeah. Um, but but overall, it's good. It's it, it's good dialogue, and you know maybe I'm a little bit more positive because what's going on over you know on 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 the football side of things. Yeah, sometimes you don't, sometimes you don't really know what you have until you to to you to, you to you see something else. You know, right, right. So yeah, and I still wonder how they're going to get to the 90 win level with their moves this off season. But that's part of the fun too, following in your favorite team. Like, how are they going to do that? But I have to say, Sam, if Hoyer's not open to hearing this from counsel and others, well, he'll lose his job. That'll be all. Yeah. That's going to be it. <laughs> I mean, can yep. we start saying that? Like, oh, he'll be open to it. He's got one year left. What gives, right? What gives? He'll be. He'll, I, he'll I be got open. one more thing from Tyone. Yeah. He remembers his Pirates days early in his career. Quote, felt like when you were in the National League Central, we were kind of the little guys coming in here, Wrigley Field, that is, and they were playing bully ball against us. Star power. It was scary to come to Wrigley and play. You didn't want to catch them on a day they were swinging it high. Going forward, that should be our expectation. Teams shouldn't want to come in here and play the Cubs. Wrigley shouldn't be a fun road trip. Chicago shouldn't be a fun road trip. They should come in here and say, we're going to get worked for three days. Close quote. Yeah, it's um, starting to get ready. Uh, is it March yet? Uh, I mean, that's but no, but that, but see, Tyone knows what's going on. And this dude, by the way, Mark has I. been great all year. Yeah. We all wanted to trade his bleep. Yeah. They kept him. <laughs> Hopefully that pays off for him and the Cubs. Cause because he's got his mind right. He's, well, he's got, got his, his mind right. And a lot, you know, a lot of these pro guys, I saw a great story in the Chicago Magazine the other day about Joakim Noah, Sam. Yeah. He said all these pro athletes these days, they're buddy-buddy. They're, they're too friendly. Yep. He said that's why the women's game is so good right now. Everybody's a rival. Yep. It's all about the competition, man. Yeah, Tyone's always been very intelligent. Even you know, even when he was struggling last year, he always had good quotes. I'm still a little concerned about the home road split. It's, um, right. But I, I'm a big fan of him. I, the the Cubs have guys on their team that have great personalities and character. I like listening to Ian Happ talk on his podcast. Mm -hmm. I, I like listening to Dansby talk, Steel. Tyone talk, Steele. Um, you know, they have they have accomplished guys. Bellinger. Um, it, it's time to to really and, and again. I don't understand why this wasn't last year. Like, I don't understand w when you finish one game out. I, I thought, and, and I, I think it was Bellinger before the season was like, we got unfinished business. We got to take care of it. I don't mm. know why that, you know, didn't stick. carry over, yeah. but, but yeah, I, I like what was said and I appreciate it as a fan uh, acknowledging it because we deserve that as fans, you know, for us to take our time every day, watch you play, buy tickets, buy merch, all these things. You know, you need to let us know that it's been far from not good enough. So thank you for that. And now it's time to fix it. And, and that starts uh, in six days, seven days, whatever it is. It starts then, you know, yeah. waivers, um, uh, opt out. Especially opt after the World Series yeah. ends. But yeah. yeah, but yes, you're right. But but even the process of, 
you know, Jed, those guys going to work. They're they should be going to work that Monday, a, a week from Monday. They should be they should be working. I hope so. I hope so. All right, the Cubs did win three out of four over the Nationals over the weekend. We'll recap uh, most of that coming up next. Hey, welcome back to Booking.com here on Locked On Cubs. Booking. Yeah, with hotels, bed and breakfast, vacation rentals, resorts, and so much more on Booking.com. You might just find your perfect stay even in your baseball rival city during the postseason. Maybe it's time to taste test your baseball competition stadium cuisine. Luckily, on Booking.com, you can find the stadium stay that's just right for you. With Booking.com's wide variety of choice across the U.S., you can go incognito to all your baseball rival cities. Uh, Some of this hurts a little bit, but maybe it's Los Angeles or Philly or New York or Baltimore or Cleveland or San Diego or, dare I say it, Milwaukee. No matter what team you are rooting for this postseason, Booking.com can make you a fan of any city around the country. The right state can make you a fan of any U.S. city, even your baseball rivals. Booking.com, booking. Yeah. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Hey, NFL fans, you can start the season with a big return on FanDuel. That's America's uh-huh. number one sports book. So when you get a hunch in the middle of a game, You can check out the latest odds, stats, view live play-by-play, and so much more on the same page where you place your bet. Speaking of bet, (laughs) there's one positive story going on in my sports life right now, and that's my college football team. Oh, very much so. The Illinois Fighting Illini were eight-and-a-half-point dogs in Lincoln, won the game outright, but Matt, listen to this. They go to Happy Valley primetime, NBC, Saturday yeah. night at Penn State, where they are 18-point underdogs, according to FanDuel. Do you take Do you take that? Do you take the bait and go, this is a good football team? They should cover the 18? Or is Vegas and FanDuel telling you this isn't that good of a football team and that's going to be a three-touchdown score? Time will tell. You'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet on FanDuel. That's FanDuel.com, America's number one sports book. The Cubs play the Phillies at 540 p.m. Central Monday, and you can hear every pitch of the Cubs' hometown broadcast on Sirius XM by searching Cubs on the SXM app. I I, I know I, I'm a sentimentalist at heart, but I, I can't believe I'm going to – I'll be reading that teaser only a few more times. All right, Cubs win three out of four over the Nationals. Uh, The 7-6 win Thursday we already covered. So then they won 3-1 Friday, 5-1 loss Saturday. By the way, let's cover Saturday's game right now. Literally zero highlights. That's Saturday's game. Well, Wisdom hit a homer. Probably his last one in the Cub uniform. Great. Actually, I do have a follow-up on that later. Okay. And uh, finally, a 5-0 win Sunday. Jamison Tyone and Shota Imanaga pitched really well Friday and Sunday, while Dansby Swanson, man, some names we already heard, had the best combined weekend at the plate, going 6-for-15 with a homer. Porter Hodge closed the game Friday. His ERA is down to 1.98 with 50 strikeouts and 41 innings. And then Sunday, 3 guys homered uh, Michael Bush Miguel Amaya and Mike Talkman who I'd like to follow up on later as well Cubs are now 23 and 6 when Imanaga starts on the mound uh Sam there's only six games left we'll of course get a preview three of those later in the show to close out um but really it was there wasn't much offense this weekend um Tyone and Imanaga especially really impressive. I, I'm I'm excited for Imanaga especially to you know get one more start this year. Um, I think I might actually be at that game on Saturday. Huh? But uh, anything stick out for you over the weekend? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I know that Paul Skeens is the unanimous Rookie of the Year. And I, know, <laughs> and I know Jackson Merrill has had a phenomenal campaign. Yeah. But Mr. Shota Imanaga better be better be at, at the podium. 
He better be third. Yeah. He's well, you know, he should be he's 16 and three. And I know, oh well, wins and losses don't matter. What when he starts, they're the best team in baseball. And when he doesn't, they're uh uh, uh you know, Pittsburgh or something like that. Or yeah, the Mar- yeah, or the Mar- the Marlins. Yeah. I I mean he's 16 and three with a two nine one. And he pitches to the conditions beautifully. He's a he, he he's a great guy to listen to. He's been a great Joel, as Council said today. Not only their best pitcher, but their best player on this team. Yeah. And if the Cubs get just 80, 85 percent of this Imanaga next year, that would be great because he has been sensational. It's a shame that we don't get to see him pitch at a crisp October night in Wrigley in two thousand twenty four. Yeah, because when he steps to the rubber. Good things happen for the Cubs, and, and credit Jed for that one. Credit this this man as a as a thirty year old rookie coming over from Japan, and just you know we thought it might take some time. He's been outstanding from the jump. Then there was doubts. Well, you know he might get fatigued at the end of the year. He looks just as good as he did oh, his opening yeah. start against Colorado. So congratulations to him. I hope he enjoys his off season and, mm-hmm. and rest because he deserves it. He has been an outstanding pickup, an outstanding pitcher for this team. Obviously, he gives up a load of home runs. Hopefully, I, I think that's something next year. Council should be really in, like careful. Like, hey, oh, let's look at it. The forecast. You know what? Friday at Wrigley's supposed to be fifty eight. Saturday's supposed to be eighty three. Let's switch them to Friday. Like, be really you know smart about that. Those things to maintain this. But he's been awesome. I I watched Thursday. I watched a good amount of Friday. Did not watch Saturday. Did not watch Sunday. Um, but yeah, it looked like good games from Swanson. Um, I think if I remember correctly, thir- late Thursday night was a big hit from uh, Bellinger late, uh, like a little blooper to short left field. Um, and then they, yeah, they, they had a nice win on Friday with, with Tyone, where it was just kind of like a low scoring, get the job done, close it out sort of yeah. thing. Uh, and then yeah, Saturday they almost got no hit. So. <laughs> Yes, they did. Yeah, and, and I have a couple player notes here. One, I not too much time to spend on because I, I don't think he's coming back. Uh, Christian Bethencourt had two hits Friday, Sam. He's hitting 306. Yeah, he's been awesome. In the 22 games with the Cubs. But I think the Cubs are going to get, you know, Danny Jansen or Travis D'Arno or – Oh, Travis Darno, sure. Uh, Travis Darno, and then who's the third one? That's a free agent, the Rockies guy. Nah, I don't. I don't have him on my board. Uh, is is it Carson is it... Kelly? Mm, awesome. All right. So I think they're going to get one of those three guys to split time with Amaya. Mm-hmm. So, but I am wondering about these three: Mastro, Talkman, and Wisdom. Yeah. You know, in particular, Wisdom has had this kind of odd final stand this past week. Is something up with Paredes, or did he play today? He played. Okay. A lot of guys didn't play today, though. Hap, Horner, Bellinger. Yeah. I just... Does Wisdom... I mean, is he is he actually in the mix to come back as like a power bat off the bench? Because I think I, Talkman's in the mix. I don't think Wisdom is. No, no, I think it's time. Uh, okay. Wisdom's batting one eighty, um, and I think like what would you say? Maybe is it safe to say about seventy five percent of the bats come against what he's supposed to be good at, lefty? Right, right, and lefty starters. He's been brutal. Yeah, he's, he's batting one eighty. Um, right. So hey, Talkman will be in the mix. They'll, they'll, they'll. I've said it. I'll say it again. I think Mike Talkman should be the fourth outfielder on this team and come off the bench. Just like how he's been used the last month and a half is how I would use Mike Talkman. I think there's value in there. Then you have a day where you have to spell Ian Happy. It's a homer. He walks twice. Yeah. Okay. So I just want to go over that. Then Mastro, are they going to keep him? Are they going to non-tender him? Yeah, I don't. I I got to think about that still. Yeah, I don't think so. Well, it depends with Madrigal. Like, what's his situation? Well, they're going to. They're going to. Do something to him. I don't <laughs> want to. I'll keep it 100, but yeah, you could say no, he doesn't have a future with the Cubs. You, well, so you think they're going to DFA him? Well, I think, yeah, I mean, or they wait till the non tender deadline, just say, see you later. Okay. Uh, <laughs> you know, or they could, uh, never mind. So, all right. Well, we're going to preview uh, Cubs Phillies coming up. Phillies are a good team, they might win the, the WS. 
uh, <laughs> next month, Sam. And the Cubs play them three of their last six games. Let's preview it next. <laughs> Today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks, America's number one daily fantasy sports app. There were 5 million active members. Wow. Prize Picks is the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Unlike other apps on Prize Picks, it's just you and the numbers. All you do is pick more or less than two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. Get in on the daily action with your friends and become part of the Prize Picks community today. You can now win up to 100 times your money on prize picks with as little as four correct picks. You can turn $10 into $1,000. And if you sign up today, you get $50 instantly when you play $5. You don't even need to win to receive the $50 bonus. It's guaranteed. And uh, this promo is alive for one more week. One Caleb Williams passing yard gets you one win on prize picks every week in September. A lot of them today. That's right. Only one yard gets you an automatic win every football weekend this month. So that's four weeks of free W's. If you've missed out, uh, jump in on that this final week because don't miss out uh, because it is gone after this week. Download the prize picks app today. Use code locked on MLB for a first deposit match up to $100. That's code locked on MLB on prize picks for a deposit match up to $100. Prize picks when you're a game. Six games left, beginning with a three game series at the Phillies, Monday and Tuesday, 5 40 Central, Wednesday, 5 05. Well, for some reason, a little bit earlier. Steele and Nola, Assad and Walker, Tyone and Sanchez. Phillies are 92 and 63. Five and five in their last 10. Might have the best one through five in baseball. Schwarber, Turner, Harper, and Bohm, all all stars, each have an OPS over 800. And then uh, Castellanos in the five spot, 22 homers uh, for good measure. I don't have many thoughts on this series just because I, I really am just, I, if, there, if I'm looking forward to 2025 a couple weeks ago, it's for sure that now. Um, I'd like to see Steele throw well Monday, and that's that's really about it. Matt, I'd like to close out the show with a little bit of fun. Um, yeah. I would like to shout out the Chicago White Sox, who lost their 120th baseball game today. Wow. And I'd like to do a little trivia for you. All right, fine. Um, just real quick. Yeah, yeah. Cubs, Phillies, you know, hopefully just steal healthy, you know, Hopefully all the pitchers stay yeah, healthy. Yeah, stay, stay healthy, yeah. you know, w- w- win a game or two, and we'll move forward. Um, right. Guys like Mike Talkman have OBP 355, Saya 359, Bush 335, wow. Red is 344. Would you like to guess today's Chicago White Sox lineup? Who has – what what number, not who, just oh. the highest OBP number on that team? Yeah, I'll guess 330. Three, Gavin Sheets at 308 was the only regular in the White Sox lineup to have an on base percentage over 300. Thanks so much for. uh... Yeah. Well, that's what's hurting the Royals right now for a possible playoff spot. They have. They're in a slump. Turns out one star player might not do it because they, boy, their lineup's really, really tough. Well, the Tigers have really made a run. Tigers are the story in the sport. They're 27 and 11 since August 11th. And the Cubs had a similar run. They just didn't create, they didn't gain much ground because the the Diamondbacks, the Mets, and the Padres and the Brewers are all going to win 90 plus. Yeah. The Padres still could win the division. Yeah. Yeah. They have a small chance, but they, they play the Dodgers this week. So, Ooh. All right. Thank you so much for checking out this edition of Locked On Cubs. You give us 20 to 30 minutes. We'll give you all things Cubs with a laugh or two along the way. Be sure to hit subscribe on YouTube as we make the push to 11,000 subs. Smash the like button for the algorithm despite the results. And leave a five-star review on Apple, Spotify, and everywhere you get your podcast. All right. That's it for the weekend episode. Somebody send me a mini W flag. Yeah, no, it was a good. Hey, it was yeah. a great weekend in terms of the communication and what we needed to hear. You did a really good job covering it and talking Thank about you. a potential possibility Thursday. Um, after seeing what happened between the hours of twelve and about three fifteen on Sunday, I feel, feel much better about our baseball team. And look, what we said it before opening day in twenty four. We'll say it before twenty five. Win the central. That's job one. Get it done. He's Sam Olber. I'm Matt Cozy. This is Locked On Cubs. It'd be an awesome season. We should win this division.
It's a bad take.